So if you have your Bible, turn to Mark chapter 4. We're going to talk about a parable of salvation. Salvation is the most important subject. Every person needs to come to a decision about God and about heaven. It's the most important subject in the Bible. Jesus taught more about this subject. It's the subject and the purpose of his life. It's why he left heaven to come down to earth. So let's look at Jesus' great story of salvation. All right? So if you have your Bibles in Mark chapter 4, would you stand with us in honor of reading God's Word? Mark chapter 4 verse 1 says, And again he began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea, and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by parables, and said to them in his teaching, Verse 3, listen, and I hope we do. Um, I hope the Spirit, for whatever reason, has led Mark and I to talk about salvation. There's a reason and a purpose for that. But it serves no purpose if we don't have ears to hear. We need to listen, not to me. Uh, not to the sounds. And by the way, the orchestra, you know, guys, y'all did, the band did great. You, you, you look like you play with much enjoyment. And I, I appreciate that. But as we listen today, I hope we hear what the Spirit has to say to us from His heart to our heart. Behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. The birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on much stony ground, where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. <clears throat> but others... Seed fell on the good ground, yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, I like this, and produced. There was a crop, folks. There was fruit. That's the purpose of the plant. Some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. And he said to them, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we come. I come because I love you. I thank you for the privilege of uh, being able to preach your word today. But Lord, all is vain if it's just my words. But Lord, if we would have ears to hear what you have to say. I know what it's like. I've felt it. I've experienced it. I've seen it. When you speak, and you speak with understanding, you speak with love, and you speak with conviction. You speak directly, poignantly, carefully, and with blessing. So Lord, as you talk about salvation today, let us hear. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. It's called the parable of the sower. It could be called the parable of the soul. <clears throat> the story is simply about the receptivity of the soul to the seed. The receptivity of our hearts to the Word of God. It's given in a parable. A parable is a story of a very common or a general activity that has another meaning behind it. <clears throat> Jesus would be with his disciples and... <coughs> Excuse me. It didn't tell us how long he had been with them, but the crowd had grown and, and they were there by the Sea of Galilee and the crowd had pushed to such a place that he saw a boat there and he gets into the boat. He cast that into the water a little bit. So now all the crowd is there on the shore. He is in the boat. Now that helps so that they can hear with their ears because his voice, and my goodness, Jesus must have had a voice to preach to thousands. Amen? 
but on the water, it was almost like a megaphone as it would bounce off the, the density of the water that was there where all could hear. And he began to speak to them in stories, in parables. And they, some probably sat, others stood. Probably some were kind of coming and going in a little bit. And he told many stories that were there, but they all had a spiritual significance behind them. A very common thing. It could have been that as they were walking to the Sea of Galilee that day, they may have come to a, a place where they saw a person who had this big thing around his waist who was out sowing seed. Literally, how it would happen is he would reach down in his hands, and as he would walk along the way, he would what we would call broadcast the seed. That means he would get a good handful of it and give it a good whoosh. Y'all like that word? Whoosh. You know, sometimes you just got to let it go. Now, when I plant, I try to get a straight line. Y'all notice the word try to. I even will put a stake at one side and a stake at one side and a string between the two, and I try to make just a straight line, right? Then I get at the end of it, and I look at it, and it looks like this. How can you do that when you got this thread right over the top of it, right there, the string? But they just would reach in their little thing and they'd just walk along and whoosh, whoosh, and the wind would take it and it would fall where it may. They may have seen that. So Jesus said, well, let's talk about that. Let me put a little spiritual spin on this. Let's see what it is. Listen to the explanation of this story. Verse 3, the sower went out to sow. That's what he does. He just takes it, and he sowed, and some seed fell by the wayside. Now, that's really, the, the wayside is the path in between. There might be a field here, or might be a field there, and there was a walking path. Now, if you walk the path over and over and over and over and over and over again, what's going to happen? It's going to pack down, right? Now, isn't it funny nothing grows there? Y'all ever had a path to the, to the mailbox? You know, and you, and you walk the path to the mailbox, and it might be a small little trail because it, we are creatures of habit, aren't we? And no grass will grow there. My dog, no, excuse me, I apologize. Lynn's dog. <clears throat> I come home from vacation, and he's taking one of our chairs out into the yard and chewed it up. Lynn's dog, right? Last week, Evangeline was at the house and Jody was outside playing with her and they had these little plastic golf clubs and a plastic ball and they're hitting them all through. So I just picked it up and the little plastic chew toy. That's what it was after Jeb got a hold of it. He just chewed it all up. So I put it up on Lynn's windshield and so she could see it because it, <laughs> Lynn's dog. My dog just comes over and says, pat me, right? Rub on me. Lynn's dog chews up the world. <clears throat> I don't know why I had to add that. That was the free part of the sermon. Y'all good with that part? All right. So, as he goes by the wayside and he's casting it out, it's packed down. I, what I was going to tell you was Jeb's got a path around the house. He's got all these acres to go everywhere he wants to go, but he just wants to go all that little same path all over the place. Seed can't penetrate the soil in the wayside. And the birds of the air came, because the seed sitting on top can't penetrate the soil. It just eats the seed, and it's gone. Some still on, fell on stony ground. Now, that means uh, in, in, in Israel in that day, they had limestone everywhere, and there might be some dirt, a little shallow dirt, up on top of the limestone there. And, and because of the sun there, that, that soil would be warm, right? But it had no depth because of the stone that was there. So water would be there for a little bit, but it would evaporate real quickly. And, and the, because the soil was warm, the seed could penetrate and, and it would sprout real quickly. But because it had no depth, when the sun came, it would scorch it and it would die away. Look what it says, verse 5. Some fell on the stony ground where it did not have much earth. Immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. Sad story. Third one, 
This is the one that he's out there and he's taking his seat and he's whoosh. And it falls into a place. Now, nobody has to plant weeds, but they just kind of come up, don't they? How many of y'all like weeds? Don't like weeds. And how come they always come up in the nice? When I till my garden, I'm telling you what, it looks so good. It's, it's just like just a, you can pick it up and it just falls down. Just, oh, it's, just, it's so wonderful. And I've got my seeds, it's so wonderful. And the next thing you know, the weeds have come and taken over. Have y'all, have y'all ever reached down to grab a weed and it had briars? In, do y'all know what I mean when I say saw briars? That's of the devil. Right? That's of the devil right there. You'll get a good handle of that and pull that up and you'll hit notes that Patrick can't hit. Melba can't hit. You'll th- the angels in heaven will say, "Woo, he hit that note. The weeds will come up around the plant and if next thing you know, they'll just be all around it and they'll take away the water. And they'll, isn't it funny, they grow twice as fast as the plant or three times as fast and they produce They multiply, and they will choke out the seed, and the plant will die. Look what it says here. He says, and some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. Some of the saddest words you'll ever hear, yielded no crop. The plant, the seed that that would produce the plant, its purpose, its only purpose is to produce a crop. Not just to look pretty, but produce fruit. And then some finds the good soil. It finds the good soil. The seed penetrates the soil. It grows up. It's got depth. Uh, The weeds are not taking over there. And it comes up and it produces fruit. Some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. One seed can produce 30 times as much or 60 times as much or a hundred times as much, but you understand that's just a phrase. It can produce a thousand times as much. And he just stops. And he tells the story, and everybody's going, okay. So his disciples, afterwards, look what it says in, in verse 10. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. Now, I'm going to give you the translation of this, but I'm going to, this uh, story, this same parable is in Matthew 13, it's in Mark 4, and it's in Luke 8. But I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation because I believe it makes it very simple to hear, and I believe uh, Kale's got it up there for us too. This is in Matthew 13, and this is verse 13. This is the explanation in the New Living Translation. Y'all listen. This is why I use these parables. For they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. Wives, have y'all ever told your husbands that? Did you not hear me? I said it very plain, and he just looks dumbfounded. Right? Right? I, I, did, did you not hear me? Evidently, they, did, they didn't hear. Verse 14, this fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, When you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. Verse 15 is the key verse here. For the hearts of these people are hardened. Their ears cannot hear. They have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see. That's sad. Their ears cannot hear, their hearts cannot understand, they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. If you hear, God will give you more understanding to hear. If you see, he'll give you more to see. If you believe and trust and comprehend, he'll give you even more. But if you turn off your hearing aid, and I've got them, but if you turn it off, I used to, there was this guy in church. I'd see him. As soon as I get up to preach, he'd do this. <laughs> you know what that meant? He didn't care. He didn't hear a word. I, he smiled the whole sermon. 
It was the most peaceful hour he ever had. If you turn the hearing off, come on. If you see but you don't recognize, there is so much in this world that God wants to tell us about salvation, about God's love and His goodness and His kindness, His riches that He wants to share, the bounty of the divine, the sovereign God who looks and takes care of us to protect us, a love that is an everlasting love that can find us in any fault, can forgive any sin, can mature the most immature, come on now, and give a peace that can settle any heart. It is the most significance of understanding and knowing and being. It is the greatest gift Beyond anything we could, it is God's greatest gift for us. It is the all-encompassing love of God, freely given in grace. Not in judgment, but in mercy. It is all of the everlasting, almighty, all-powerful God. It is all of that brought to little old us. And why would anyone turn a deaf ear to that? Why would anyone have a blind eye? Yet it happens. Jesus tells this story and he explains it to them and they don't necessarily understand. So let me try to bring this into picture here. Now, <clears throat> I've been preaching a few years. Say so, amen. How many times have I preached this? I don't know. Many, 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 many times. Most of the time when you preach this, hard soul. You got the soul with the stones and there's no depth. You've got the soul where the thorns are. Chokes it out. Oh, you've got the good soul. 30, 60, 100 fold. And we just say three of the souls, that's just all it is. They're just not going to make it. Listen to me, they could. But something's got to change. Something's got to change. Come as you are. I don't know who this sermon's for. Come as you are. It doesn't really matter, but it matters if you will prepare your heart to receive what the Lord would have to say to you. You may need a holy hug today. You may need a, a touch that only He can give. You may need a kiss on the cheek. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? My wife will lean over and just give me a little peck. My chest will go out. And I, That's good stuff, folks. My daughter yesterday, I came home, she gave me a peck. My granddaughter will come and she'll want to make sure that she gives me a peck on both sides. Amen? Maybe you just need a, just a love, a little God kiss. And he wants to do so very much. But there's things that are blocking the way. The first one, let's talk about the compacted soul, the hardened heart, trampled down, beaten down. These are the people who grow up in this world and they're taught from an early age about what is important. And it's not necessarily the things of God that they're taught is important. Listen to me, influence is power. The influence of a parent, the influence of a friend, the influence of a teacher. I knew a man who's now in heaven. He overdosed. I knew that man who I met him when he went for 
He went to rehab. I met him in rehab. He uh, was told by a third grade teacher that he was nothing but poor white trash. And folks, he never got over it. His view of himself was he was nothing. Influence is power. And sometimes if you come to this world to get a drink of that which is refreshing from this world, it will come back polluted, not drinkable. Toxins, hard. They'll tell you this is the plan for success. This is worldly wisdom. But we understand that there's a lot of harsh situations in life. And there's limited or no spiritual atmosphere. And folks, this grieves my heart. If you look at a heart or any place in your body and there is a wound there, you know what will happen? A scar will come around that wound. It may be words. It may come from a parent. It may come from a... a Someone else, but there are things that hurt, that hurt us and wound us. And whoever said sticks and stones may break your bones, but, but names will never hurt you. No, 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 no. There are wounds, there are hurts, there are pains, there are looks that are given, there are dismissive things, there are, uh, you are of no value when, when, when a person gets fired. When a person hears from their spouse that they pledged, I want a divorce. When they hear the doctor say, six months. All of these things around them, we build up a wall to protect ourselves. And here's the thing, we don't really realize we're building that wall, but well, we'll build a wall, and we'll build a wall on the outside of that wall taller. And a wall on the outside of that wall even taller. And if you want to try to break through, you've got to break through one at a time. But it's compacted, and it's hard. And if, and if someone wanted to get to you, it, you can't get there. The seed can't penetrate. And because the seed can't penetrate, it's easy for Satan to come and say, that's nothing. They may hear a sermon. They may even feel the stirring of the Holy Spirit. But because the scars of life are there, Satan will come in and say, don't listen to that nonsense. So easily taken away. The shallow soul. I call this limited belief. The seed can penetrate. It can. The seed has to fall into the ground, into the earth, and that outer layer of the seed has to die away. And then the life can come. And the seed can find the soil. It can penetrate the soil. And it can produce life. But there's no depth. There's rock there. Because it, the soil is warm, it, it immediately they, they want to make a decision for God. Have y'all met those people? Oh, the greatest thing. They're just, they go from zero to heaven. But they put a limit on what they will, come on now, please listen. They will put a limit on what they'll do, what they'll give to God, how much they'll believe. Well, I'll believe this part of it, but I won't believe that part of it. They'll come to the Word of God and they'll say, I, I like this part, but I don't like that part. I'll believe this part. I'm not going to believe that part. It's all God's word and it's all good. And it's all for us. There's some of it that makes me go, amen. There's some of it that goes, ooh. There's some of it, yes, Lord, yes. Some of it knocks me to my knees. Limited advancement. The roots go down, the sprout goes up, but can only live for a short time because life's tough. Have y'all know that? And, and taking a stance for Christ, you better have a foundation. I 
I know in this world today that everybody wants to tell you, you're just fine, you're just okay, you're all right. I'm telling you what God wants for you is to go deep. And when you put limits on the Almighty, when you say you'll do this, but you won't do that, you ever heard somebody say, well, I'm not going to do that? Well, you can right away, right off fruitfulness right then and there. Because what happens is when the Son, the needed Son of God comes because of no depth, because of no water, because it dries up, it will die. simply because they're not willing to accept the depth. The third one, oh, it's got good seed. It's got good soil. It'll sprout up, but those weeds sprout up. They come alongside. This is the one that uh, adds belief to many other things in their life. They've got many things that they feel in their life are important. I call them distractions. The Lord would call them idols. The cares of this world. Worldly goals. Money. That's what Jesus talked about here. Fame. Please hear me when I say this. Control. People want control. I hope you're listening. Control is an illusion. There are plenty of control freaks, and they they gotta be in charge. They gotta be in control, and they gotta. I gotta put in my. I'm gonna make sure. Listen, that's an illusion. There's only one that has control, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. As soon as you think you got it all figured out, you're gonna hit a wall. My wife and I were talking about this last night. She, she says, Brian, you have gone through so much. Satan has attacked you so much. And we started talking about how close to death I've come quite a few times. And she said, you just don't worry about it. I, I was diagnosed, I don't know, 25, over 25 years ago with diabetes. And she says, you don't bother you. You just walk around with your insulin pump and just go on, live your life. Be headstrong. Go forward. How many times does the doctor have to say cancer? By the way, I'm doing good. My voice is as good as it's been in the last eight, nine months. Amen? <clears throat> they're they're going to check a little while, you know, on this kind of stuff. And I got a pet scan coming. And I can tell you one thing. I got the softest skin on this side y'all ever seen. No hair grows there anymore. Just radiate, kill it all off. I don't care. But the thing that I have, they always say it, it comes back. 70% of the time it comes back. And um, when mine comes back, it comes back fierce like what Randy had. Uh, by the way, didn't Randy do a good job last week? Just giving God all the praise, glory, and honor. Praise God. But y'all listen. It doesn't matter what you face. Weeds are going to be there. But the kind that we, if you want the crop to grow, get them out. Get them out. I don't care if there are briars. Get them out. How many of y'all love to hoe? Me either. But it's necessary. It's necessary. How many of you, come on are willing to do the work. In our society today, it scares me that nobody wants to work. It scares me that everybody thinks that everything is supposed to be just given to them. I mean, everywhere. I go, through the, go to the shopping marts and all these stores, out there, and the people will take a buggy from the front door and they'll take it out in the parking lot and just leave it for somebody to go play bumper cars with it out there. I don't know. They can't even take their cart back. I had a lady that my wife was driving down the road 
And this lady wanted to pull out, and there was a car over here, and she got mad at my wife because my wife did not pull over and let her out. So she got out, and she pulled around and pulled in front of my wife and stopped her and was out yelling at her and screaming at her because my wife was going down the road and just didn't stop or get out of the way so this lady could get in the road. What are we, what's going on? It's everywhere. People want everything done for them. And the one who wants to do the very most, we want him to come with this nice, beautiful tray and place it here in front of us. But we also want money and fame and all this other stuff out here. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It bugs me that parents today are not teaching their children the ways of the Lord. And then they're going to have put expectations on them. All but the good soul. All the good soul. It makes you feel so good when you walk out there. The reason I garden is I like to watch things grow. And yes, you got to hoe, and yes, you got to prepare, and yes, you got to... That's all work, but it's all good. But when, when I go out there and I see the blooms, come on. And when I, you know what I like? Can, I know this is, I need to hush, but I like okra. Y'all like okra? My wife can cook some okra now. Woo, she knows how to cook it. And, and, and you know what I do when I go out? I cut the okra and I cut everything below the, where it blooms, I cut it off. And I like Clemson Spineless. Y'all might not know who that is or what that is, but I like Clemson Spineless. And it'll grow tall. And Margaret, I just keep cutting off everything below it because I want all the good stuff to come for the fruit. I want my okra to grow. Right? And my, it, it, Clemson Spineless will grow. Now, my dad was about five foot six, five foot seven, and he'd get out there and he'd have to bend the okra over to cut it. Amen? My life, I want it to grow so tall towards the Lord so that he can get all the glory and praise and glory and honor. You know, so much could happen if we would just let it. What are we going to have to do? Well, if you've got a hardened heart, you need to soften your heart. You need to be open. You need to talk to someone. I would advise you to get in a group. People of like nature, and you can share with them and they can share with you. I tell them all the time, I like, they come to me and they say, Pastor, I, I've been hurt. I said, write it out. Journal it. Write it down. Write it down. Get it all out. Forgive. And seek forgiveness. There's too many scars that have come because something happened and you could not forgive. Try something new. Try, change things up. New beginning. Cry. Fast. Pray. Listen. Go deep. Believe God. Take a chance. I cannot tell you how many times over the years someone has come to me and say, and, and they want to talk about tithing. And, and, and most of the time when they come to me, not all the time, but most of the time when they come to me, they want to, they want to find out if, if I really believe that they're supposed to tithe. And you know what I'm doing? I just tell them the Word of God. Well, how much am I supposed to? Do I do it on net or do I do it on gross? And I'm like, good Lord. Do it under the Lord. Do it under the Lord. But when you come and you start setting up, I'll do this, but I won't do that. I'll believe this. I won't believe that. I, I, I'll trust God here. I'm not going to trust God there. There's no depth. Broadest, we used to say, one group would come on Sunday morning, half that group would come on Sunday night, and half that group would come on Wednesday night. Now i got people watching me online. By the way, thank you for watching. I'm still blown away by this. I have not gotten I, I, I have not gotten comfortable yet with people watching the fire from afar. But I'm learning. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to listen. I know there's good gold there. I'm just trying to learn how to be a pastor of those people, but understand that you need to let God do a God work. And 
You need to get rid of all those things. Examine your heart. Get rid of the things that don't matter. Is what you're living for worth missing heaven for? Are you raising your kids or your grandkids for God or for this world? I've watched as people face sickness and death. I've watched as people went from one relationship to the next. I've watched as they, I've stood by them when their houses were burning down. I've watched as people lost jobs and lost all their retirement. I've seen family members walk away from other family members. I've given them Kleenex across the desk as one says, I just don't love them anymore. What's it going to take to get our attention? If you're living for this world, that's all you're going to get is this world. But the good soul. Can I share something with you? And I'm going to close. I, I'm reading a book, or excuse me, I've read a book called uh, Strength to Strength. It's an amazing book. I can't remember the author's name off the top of my head. I'll, I'll give him credit next week. I'll remember, try to give him credit next week. But in, in his book, Strength to Strength, he talks about one day he was sitting underneath a, an aspen tree. How many of you know what an aspen tree is? They don't grow around here too much because they're, they like colder weather. But uh, sometimes, I mean, they're all through Canada and the northern part of the United States. But sometimes you'll find them in mountains like in Colorado or someplace like that. And the, and the aspens will grow and they can sometimes be 50 to 100 feet. And, and they, they look so amazing. But here's the thing about them. They have a root system. It's called, and I wrote this down, large clonal colonies. You see, they all come from the sucklings of one seedling. And a tree will come up, but the roots will go sideways, and another will come up. And they'll grow, and another will come up. Now, they can live anywhere from 40 years to 120 years, okay? But it's really not one tree. It can become 50 trees from one seedling, 100 trees from one. And they can live a long time. The largest that we know of, is in Utah. It's called the Pando. They estimate that it's 80,000 years old. And get this, the one suckling seeding, seedling covers 106 acres. 47,000 trees. One will die off, another comes up. One will die off, another comes up. But the strength is all of them are connected together. 106 acres connected by one, one tree. How many of y'all have ever heard of the redwood? They like it where it's cool and wet. So Northern California, Oregon, Washington, they're up there. A hundred foot, 200 foot, 300 foot tall. Have y'all seen the pictures of people where they made a road where you actually drive through a tree? How deep do you think, a 300 foot tree, <coughs> excuse me, how deep do you think the roots go? No more than 10 feet. Five to ten feet. How do you have a tree 300 foot tall not fall over when the roots are five to ten feet? Because they grow sideways and they interleak with the others. So when the winds come and the storms come, a 300 foot tree will stand strong because it's connected together. Y'all look around at each other. 
We find strength in being connected together. The Lord created a church. And there may be a hundred that meet over here, 50 that may meet over here, 250 will meet over there, 2,000 will meet over there. But I'm here to tell you, in every one of those, there will be small groups, but they can connect with other groups. And if we all connect together, let the winds and the rains and the storms come. Listen, that aspen, it can go through a forest fire. And soon as the, the, the ashes are over, the sprouts will come. You can't kill it. That's why it can last 80,000 years. Do you hear me? There is strength when God grows his seeds together. And we start thinking about all the fruit that we produce. I believe that one of the greatest fruit we're going to produce when we get to heaven and we understand is how we are there to support and encourage and help and reach out to others. There's a lot of people that we know of that have heart and soul. They need somebody to bounce some things off of. There are some people that have no depth yet, but they need some encouragement. They need someone that will come along beside them and help Break up that fallow ground. Jeremiah chapter 4, Hosea 10. Break up the hardened, packed, fallow ground. Weed out. Listen. Find counsel. It disturbs me that 75% of these are not going to make it. Does it you? It grieves me. When the church is there to help each other. If you listen to the Holy Spirit, listen. The number one thing you need to know is when you breathe your last breath, I don't care six months, 10 years, 80 years, I don't care. When you breathe your last breath, where will you be? The Bible says it plain, heaven or hell, with God, without God, in joy and despair. In a place where everyone loves everyone, peace evermore, or the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Your choice. There's nothing in this world that we should exchange for the love of God.